Do all amplifiers sound the same? That's the question we're gonna be answering in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisalo with Audioholics. So I wanna talk about amplifiers again. About six years ago, I did a video about do all amplifiers sound the same with Hugo. Remember our pal? Hugo Rivera, Vice President of Marketing. I want to revisit this topic because I have some new evidence to show you about how amplifiers don't always sound the same, even when they're not clipping or producing distortion. So recently we published a review for Polk. We did the L200s from their Legend series. And you could see the review right now at AudioHawk's homepage. Awesome review, awesome product, but there was a problem initially. When we measured that speaker, we noticed there was a, a good amount of high frequency roll off. We sent these measurements to Polk Audio and they also measured their speakers. They use anechoic methods like we do. And they found that our measurements were a little bit off at the high frequencies. So that had me scratch on my head. If it's not the speaker, which we narrowed it down, the speaker was fine. It had to be something with the amplifier. And when I figured out the amplifier that James Larson was, was using for his testing outdoors, it was a small amplifier from Dayton Audio. It's the DA30, I believe is the amplifier model. And it's a class D amplifier. And it's not one of those um, modules. It's actually a chip amp. So it doesn't have any post filter feedback like some of the better class D amplifiers have. And even though it was rated for four ohms and it was a it's a bridgeable amplifier, what I found what was happening in this amplifier when it was driving a four ohm load is it was causing too much high frequency roll off. And if you look at the graph of the Polk speaker, the L200, when we measured it with the Dayton amplifier versus when we measured it with an Emotiva amplifier, Emotiva was kind enough to send us an X base, I think 150 for our testing purposes to measure speakers outdoors there was a big difference. There was about a five dB difference above seven or eight, or eight kilohertz. So this amplifier for this DA30 from Dayton Audio, it's not a bad little amplifier. It's not really anything I would consider audiophile. The amplifier wasn't clipping. We were only testing the speaker at 2.83 volts, or in this case, it's a little over uh, two watts when you're dealing with a four ohm speaker. But the problem is some speakers, it's a very rare speaker that you see this, but some speakers actually have a low impedance at high frequencies. So the Polk, if you look at the impedance plot of the Polk speaker, it maintains about a five ohm impedance all the way out to 20 kilohertz. And that's that ring radiator tweeter that's doing that. So if you take a speaker like this Polk Legend L200 and you made it with an amplifier that's really not good at driving four ohm loads, you can see stuff like this happen. I saw something like this happen back in the days with Pioneer when they had the ICE modules in their receivers that those amplifiers would severely limit power into four ohms. I've seen this with Yamaha receivers, very low end of Yamaha receivers, where um, as you drive the power at low impedance, the uh, temperature circuits and the limiting circuits, the current limiting circuits would actually engage to protect the amplifier to meet UL requirements. And you would see the distortion versus power should go up like this, but it was actually going backwards. So it was getting less power, even though the amplifier wasn't clipping, there was limiters that were limiting the current that this amplifier was capable of producing. So that's basically two examples here where an amplifier will sound different. There's no doubt about it. You can definitely hear an audible difference of an amplifier that's five dB down above seven kilohertz driving a speaker and an amplifier that's not clipping. See, the common myth is amplifiers all sound the same unless they're clipping. Well, here's one example where you have an amplifier that's not clipping, that's delivering clean power, but it's not good at driving low impedance loads. Some of these lower end class D amplifiers are not load invariant. And I'm gonna be talking more about this in a future video. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a feeling for this and see what the response is. If you like this video, please thumb it up. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Let me know what characteristics you look for in an amplifier when you're shopping amplifiers. And if you've heard differences in amplifiers in your own test setups, I'd like to hear your comments. So I'm gonna get more into these topics in the future. And don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com audioholics. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.